We start with the assessment of the quadriceps tendon using scans that cover the major axis. We can see the characteristic appearance which is quite complex, as this tendon originates from the fusion at the aponeurosis of the muscle bellies of the quadriceps femoris. We study then along the course up to its insertion. Here you can see at the level of the superior rotator pole that the fibers have this characteristic appearance at the insertion. We will also use a short axis scan to scan it with another axial reference plane. Once this is done, we can move to analyze the tendinous component of the rotula with a scan along the major axis of the tendon. We scan it starting from the lower pole of the rotula on the left and move up to its insertion at the distal end of the anterior tibial apophysis. This tendon may be studied very well using ultrasound scans. It is a tendon that has a thin morphology, so thin that when we do the scans internally, rotating the transducer clockwise by 90 degrees, we can see its classic thin morphology with a concave ventral profile, which is a feature of this tendon. Again, we have to be very careful to scan it properly, because if the transducer is not perfectly perpendicular, the scan will be incorrect due to the azenotropy phenomena and the tendon will not be measurable as it looks hypoechoic. Keep in mind that a normal rotular tendon is characterized by a fibrillar hypoechoic appearance. Looking at the deeper parts, we can also study the component known as the Hoffa adipose body, which is a very important mechanical component of the knee. We move now for the final scan on the anterior compartment. We will ask the patient to flex his knee, possibly more than 90 degrees, in order to target a very important cartilage structure that lines the femoral trochlea. Here we can appreciate this homogeneous hypoechoic aspect above the cortical bone component that represents the articular cartilage at the level of the femoral trochlea. After this, we evaluate the anatomical components of the medial compartment of the knee. We will try to analyze one of the most important, which is the medial collateral ligament. As you know, this ligament has a peculiar morphology and anatomy, and it is made by two components. A surface component, which we can see in the image, and this is characterized by a ribbon-like structure that covers the medial compartment, and a deeper component, meniscus femoral and meniscus tibial, which accounts for the complexity of this ligament. This V that we see is the joint line in which, in this case, we can see the medial meniscus. Moving further distally and posteriorly, we can also analyze the so-called goose foot, which is a very important continuous complex structure inserted at the medial tibial component level. Here we see its laminar hyperechoic appearance. Siamo adesso sul compartimento laterale del ginocchio per andare a studiare We move on to the lateral component of the knee to study, first of all, an important structure located more anteriorly with respect to the ligament components. This is the iliotibial band and originates from the fascia lata tensor. You can see it on its long axis length and we can highlight the insertion of its component at Jerdy's tubercule. The iliotibial band, if examined proximally, has close ties of contiguity with the lateral femoral condyle, which, at this level, is often the site of friction. This scan also allows us to recognize some very important structures, such as the presence of these uniform irregularities of the bone surface that represent the popliteal hiatus, where the tendon of the popliteus muscle begins. Another very important structure 
is the distal tendon of the biceps femoris that is localized contiguously and superficially with respect to the lateral collateral ligament. This tendon is examined up to the correspondence of its common insertion with the ligament at the level of the head of the fibula. The last thing to do is to evaluate the lateral collateral ligament, which is highlighted by flexing the knee a little more. Now we shall look at the last compartment, which is the posterior compartment of the knee. We will ask the patient to lie on his stomach in order to be able to scan this area. We will initially use axial scans. This allows us to find some very important structures. Specifically, in this medial posterior region, we recognize the components of the gastrocnemius muscle and the semimembranosus muscle, which are contiguous and, as we know, are separated by the common purse of the gastrocnemius semimembranosus. This purse, obviously, in this case, is not visible as it is collapsed and not filled with liquid. Very often, however, it is highlighted in the form of an anachogenous purse if, for example, there is a joint fusion. Another structure we encounter moving the probe towards the center is represented by the vascular nervous bundle. We can study the vascular nervous bundle by using axial scans and then we can also analyze it using scanning planes along the major axis, as you can see from this type of scan. A very important ultrasound scan of the posterior compartment is on the external shatic popliteal nerve. This is a peripheral nervous branch which has a very close relationship with the head of the fibula. The scanning is done using a postural lateral approach and we see how the probe has to be positioned to assess its presence and to follow it to the point where it leads above the head of the fibula and finally rotates anteriorly. With this scan, the ultrasound examination of the knee is complete.